In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to plot points on a map with D3JS. And we're going to be using this observable as a reference point. And we'll be making this SVG, this path element, this uh, path element, and then a bunch of G elements and these circles. And we're going to be using this as a reference. But instead of making this with HTML, we're going to be making it with uh, D3. So we'll be drawing out each of these elements using the methods that we have from, from D3. So let's first use this project that we have already started. And I'll just add a new page and an item in the header to reference our new page, which is going to be called map plot. And we're going to be plotting state capitals here. So I'm running this with Snowpack. So I'll run Snowpack dev here and just see the new page that I have. So now I'm going to reference my index.js. And in here, we can run console log just to make sure that this works and open up the console. We're actually not seeing it yet, but we'll fix that later. So let's go ahead and import D3. And we will paste in the SVG HTML code that we're going to be creating using D3. Let's start off by declaring our width, which is 975 and our height as well, which is 610. These two things are declared in the HTML element that was made in the observable, and we're gonna be using them from these variables. So we'll start off by creating an SVG element and assigning some attributes to them, to it, our height and our width. And once we've set this width, let's delete that and save it and open up our browser again and we're going to inspect it. We're going to be inspecting the HTML in, uh, in here to see how everything that we're um, doing in our code is manifesting in the actual browser. So right now we don't see it there yet. And that's because we actually have to append this SVG element to the DOM. So we do this with append child and svg.node. And now if we open up our body, we can see the SVG element in there. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is create this path element. And this is going to be for, uh, let's take a look. This is going to be for the actual shape of the United States. So the, the gray fill in that we have here. And um, we're going to create this with a path element. So this is going to be the background. We'll do svg.append and a path. We'll do the same thing for the borders. The borders are going to be a separate path element, the white borders in there. And you can't see the console there, but I've created those two path elements. Now we can add some attributes that we see down in lines 19 and 20. And first we create our fill on the first one. And if we look in path, we look at the D attribute for path. Um, we can see that this is the actual shape of that element. And that is something that we're going to define here in a second. But for now, let's do the fill and the stroke. And then we'll do these other attributes that we have here on the second path element. Now, if we take a look in our console, we can see those attributes that we just applied. And they're showing up right here in our console, which is exactly what we want. OK, so once we've got those things, let's talk about the D, the D attribute that we wanted. So within that, we've got our path and our topo JSON, um, which are two variables and functions that we'll be using from observable, from the observable that we're referencing. First is the path function. Um, that's pretty simple, d3.geopath. And then this topo JSON is um, more of black magic. We're going to import this. Uh, from this module that we've installed. And I can't exactly tell you what it's doing. Um, I am running into some issues here. There was a bug that I had and finally fixed it, I think. Okay, cool. So uh, I had to make sure I was importing it correctly. Now those things are still showing up. So I made sure that I'm not breaking anything, which is good. Um, now that I'm importing it correctly, let's go ahead and set this D attribute. And this is pretty simple. We can just copy and paste this stuff. Like I said, I don't truly understand what topo JSON does. I know that it's giving us information about 
the uh, United States and what shape they should be. Um, but I don't understand a lot about it. So we're just going to use it as we see fit and as it's used in this um, observable here. So we'll go ahead and download this uh, file that has the state capital data. And we'll import this as well once it's downloaded. And we're going to use this for our D attribute, this path topo JSON. And now that we load this up, you can see that it's actually showing stuff in the browser. So that's good. We have the shape of the United States. So we can we can get rid of that. We'll bring it back. Now we want the borders. And so we'll just use the same or this other function that's declared in here. And we'll just copy and paste this. I don't truly understand what's happening here. There is some kind of comparison. And we can look at the objects that it's comparing. Once you go in here, you kind of see, uh, let's open this. You can see a bunch of arrays and it's kind of actually confusing. I don't truly know, even when I look at it, I don't really know what's going on. So we'll just take that for what it's worth and assign the attribute here. And then load this up and we do have the borders now for each of the states. So now that we have the borders, the next thing we need is to add the actual points. And, and these points are coming in groups. So We'll create a new variable here, and this is going to be the state capital elements. And we're going to append that G element that we had. And again, we're going to be assigning attributes. And we're just taking these from the actual HTML that we have below. So we can just kind of copy these from line 36, which is what we're doing. So we'll set those attributes, and we can save that. And we could reference the HTML in the um, in the actual DOM in here. But what we want to do is using each of these um, data elements in the array, we're going to be creating a new G element for this. So we want to map this to the data. So for each one of these elements in the array, we have a state capital and it has the name of the state and the name of the city. And then it has the latitude and the longitude. And we're going to be using each of these things to uh, show them in the map. So it's destructuring here into several different variables. Um, and this is using map, but we're going to be using uh, D3 related functions in order to do this. So we'll download this file and we're going to move it into our folder. And then we're going to convert it from CSV to JSON using this command. Um, and this is something that is, comes with D3, but you can also use NPX to um, do this conversion from CSV to JSON. So we've got that in there. We'll import the file. Um, we're going to take in this projection. And projection is also something we're just kind of copying and pasting in here. This is doing something with uh, GeoAlbert's USA. That's a function that draws out a, um, the USA in a certain shape. And so this is going to be a flattened USA. And uh, I don't know exactly how this works, but I know that's what it does. And then we're going to give it our um, height and our width, our width and our height divided by two. And we'll take these in here. And once we have this, then we can use our projection function. So like I said, we're going to pass in um, this is actually the wrong syntax, so we're going to change it to data. And then our data is going to be the data that we loaded in just now that we imported. Um, and then instead of the map function, we're going to be using select all G. And since there are no G's yet, we have to join on G, that G element. That's going to create these new elements for each data item. And so now if we save this, um, if we were to save it and jump over to the HTML, we would see them loading in. But let's add another uh, child to that item that we've just created. So we're going to add this G item in here. And we can add the attribute of transform like we can see in the HTML. So we transform and then we're going to be using a function here. And we're going to be pulling this D is an item in the data array. And then for this D, and we can actually uh, destructure we want longitude and latitude longitude and latitude for this. So we can destructure. Um, let's see, I've got an issue with uh, our closing some brackets here. 
So we can destructure this D to be our longitude and latitude, which are going to be attributes of that item. And now if we, we've got our G, everything looks good here. We should um, see this SVG element showing up multiple times throughout the map. So we haven't added any circles or anything, but it's probably going to be showing up all around here. So now if, we're added, if we are to add a circle to that, we would append circle onto that G element that we just created. Um, and let's give it a radius of two. And jump over here. We don't see anything yet. So let's see, we're going to do some troubleshooting and I think we're gonna burn through here, burn through this video. Um, inspecting here is key. I'm, I'm buzzing through this because I'm debugging here, but inspecting in the actual browser console is super helpful. Um, when using D3, you can see where stuff is showing up and you can see I'm like adjusting the radius to see where this stuff is. Um, and eventually I will look at, right, so I'm looking at the transform and I see there's a syntax error in the transform. And so you can see how I'm ending that. There's like a, an extra double quote, which is kind of weird if you look at that. There it is. So let's fix that double quote. Something in here is not closing properly. So we'll get rid of that, save that. Now you have these giant circles. Okay, so I can go back and change my radius to something normal, at least something that I want. So two, now we have the circles showing up like we want. Now we wanna pop in this text. So we're going to have to add this text and we're gonna set attributes just like we've done with everything else. And we'll set a Y to negative six, just like it's set in this uh, HTML down here. And we wanna pull in that description so our text here is going to pull from the element, which is going to be d.description. And we can destructure here as well. And it's not adding it because um, of the way that I am chaining off of here. So this state capital elements, um, we need to be adding it to this state capital elements instead of right now because of the way that D3 chains, it's adding our text element onto the circle because the circle is the most recent item that was added. And so instead of appending that text on line 38 to the circle on line 36, we're going to be uh, appending it to the G. So let's set, an, set a uh, variable here to these state capital elements. And then once we've set that variable, then to that we can append the circle and close that out and then we're also going to make sure that we're appending this again let's make sure it works which it does and then we're going to make sure we append this text to the state uh to the capital groups sorry not the state capital elements now we see the text which is great um these these attributes are not applying so let's just open up the console and see what's going on here they're still not applying in the dom um, so let's just go ahead and take these and instead of applying them on this parent element, we'll just get rid of them here and attach them to the text itself. Indent this, save it. And now we have all this text loading exactly like we wanted. We jump back here and we see that it's, it's the same. It's exactly what we were looking for. We've taken this observable that's building this map of state capital points um, and this observable is doing it basically using the HTML that you see at the bottom of the screen. And we've recreated the same thing using D3. So programmatically creating the SVG and then creating the path elements, adding attributes to those of the fill and the D that we talked about. And then for um, also that SVG, we're adding a G element and adding att attributes to that. And then under that G element, we're adding um, 50 different G elements elements that is uh, basically mapped to each of those data points that we pulled in. And then for each of those, we are adding text and we're adding the circle. So that is how you plot points on a map with D3JS. Hopefully this was helpful and we'll see you in the next video.